Okay, so today we are going to paint our print. Um, this has been uh, dried for a couple days now. Um, if you're doing an oil-based ink, the uh, ink takes about uh, 24 hours to dry depending on what you're using. Uh, but make sure it's dry. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to be painting with them with watercolors. Um, I will say that, uh, so I printed on the lightweight Reese paper. And if you never painted on this type of paper or you are used to watercolor paper, this is different. It's going to have a different feel. Um, I quite like it. It's a soft kind of cotton paper and uh, it absorbs the color really well. One thing is, is it is thinner. Um, so it can't hold as much uh, water or as like much dense color for a single layer. So layers are key uh, to painting and they're just uh, a good thing to do when you're watercoloring anyways, to do lots of layers. Um, so for this one, so chickadees, uh, they're kind of, they're kind of white and they have a little bit, you know, of brown and stuff, but they don't have a lot of color on the bird. So I think I'm going to start with the background and do a little bit more uh, of a color uh, thing going on for the sky. Maybe um, I'm thinking about some like pinks or something, maybe some purples. Um, we'll see where that goes, um, but I'll start with that. All right, so I'm going to start uh, with a round brush. It's a pretty good size. It's a round 10, and I'm just going to go over and wet the background. So this is a wet on wet uh, technique. Okay, so I'm just going to wet my brush. I'm gonna use that same brush and then um, just go in with my my palette here and load the brush up. And then um, I like to start with a lighter kind of color, water it down a bit and then uh, go back and add more color later, especially for this kind of first layer. So I'm starting here, that may seem like a lot, but it'll dry lighter, and then also I'm going to be spreading it all around. And then I'm going to come back with some blues to tone it out, but having a good kind of base will be good. So I'm just going to go around uh, the outside here and have a layer for this. So you can always add more water and that will lighten it and uh, thin out the color. It's a good thing uh, you don't want like your whole layer to be like the same. So have some spots where it's darker, have some spots where it's lighter. I think this is going to be like a sunset real kind of. And so I'm going to have it be darker up here on top and then it's going to kind of fade to the light. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to get it started on the first layer of the chickadee. Okay, so I'm going to use a filbert brush. Um, whatever brushes you have will work, but uh, I recommend um, a smaller brush. This is this prints a five by four, so there's going to be some smaller details. And uh, I'm going to start up here at the bottom, and chickadees kind of have like this um, tannish uh, brown to them. And then, so I'm going to add just a little bit more color uh, than normal chickadees. And since this is a painting, uh, it's it's always good. You can add you know, a lot of colors um, that you wouldn't expect in them. More colors kind of translate with layers uh, to just a, a well-rounded painting. So I'm just gonna come in and then um, add some of that, that tan brown up on his breast and down at the bottom. And then, so uh, I put a layer of the color and then now I'm, I am smoothing it out and blending it uh, to to the white and I'm just cleaning my brush and then just coming back in with that clean brush with just water and then that uh, blends the color. So now we have color here and it kind of blends back to the, the white. 
So a good tip um, for painting, uh, especially painting prints like this, is you want to keep a good uh, balance with your lights and your darks um, still, and you need to think about value. And so a good thing uh, for you to think about is when you're painting is, so when we did our carving, we used uh, just black and white. And so the black were our darkest of the prints and our drawing, and then we left the white as was our negative space, and those were the highlights. So when you're painting, um, when you're painting the darker areas, you already have your shadows. And so you, what you're doing when you're painting in the darker areas is you're painting in the highlights of that. So even if it's dark, it's still like the, the lightest parts of that dark. And then when you're painting in the highlighted areas, you wanna leave some of that white space, but you're filling in the shadows of the areas or the darker parts of that white space. So that's a good way to think about painting um, and the value system is when you're painting in all those negative areas, it's uh, it's kind of the darker spots of your reference image. And then the darker areas would be your lighter areas. So you still get that good sense of light and dark. Okay, so I added a little second layer to the bird. And um, so I just had uh, some blue and I mixed in up, up here. And then I added the blue down and that creates a good um, kind of gray darkened layer. And then, so the blue is cool and then the brown is, is warm. And so the mix of those um, warm, cool colors interacts in a very uh, lovely way. And it adds a lot of depth to, to the color and, and to what you're painting. So um, adding shadows and uh, layers on top of each other of warm and cools gives a very rich um, color to that too. Okay, so now for the tree, I'm just going to take uh, my leftover um, sky, that, that, that blue, and I'm just going to do a fast little uh, layer over that to set that tone. Um, so if you're thinking about kind of light, um, if the light's coming into the uh, painting, it's coming from behind forward. So this would be uh, more of a shadow, so it's gonna be darker. Um, so I can go ahead and set uh, that in blue. And then we will begin our second layer on to the chickadee. Okay, so I added the final layer for the chickadee. I went back uh, with the warm and browns and kind of added the, over that. Uh, and then I went back in the wings and added some blues and some uh, browns into that. Okay, so I am working on the last layer for the background. And it's very saturated right now and I got a lot of color. And so what I'm going to do is take a bigger brush. I'm going to just dampen it slightly. It can either be dry, I'm just going to kind of dry it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the background very lightly. I'm going to start um, at the top and I'm going to go down in the middle and then I'm going to brush upwards. And then for the bottom, I'm going to um, work up and then back down. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking those colors and then kind of, you know, just blending them together but so the, the dark colors will come down and then that blended layer will come back up and that creates a good gradient. So I need to clean that off because um, that's dark. I've got a paper towel here. So I'm just going to dry that off some uh, when I'm working back on the top. And then I have this big, this is a two inch brush, like Bob Ross, just two hairs and some wisp. This will just create some continuity and get rid of some of the brush marks that were left. So 
a real wisp wispy light that was very saturated with color there you go and then um let that dry and then you got your background okay so my uh painting is almost done uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a little bit of that purple from that background and just get a little light uh bit of it and then i'm just going to kind of go over like the tree this is a very light layer this is called glazing and so it's just going to add a little bit of that tone into um, your piece so the browns will become a little bit more uh purple and then i may even just go back into the chickadee and add just a little bit this will have to be um a really light layer but add some hints of the uh, purple into the chickadee um so what i'm doing is i i have my uh paint here on my palette and then i'm going back in i'm just lighting the brush on the on the outside of the print and uh just getting rid of a lot of excess paint this is a you know light layer so i don't want it um to really soak in to the paper just kind of brushly going over it you kind of think uh you know it's called glazing and so you just want it to be a real light application to this just a little hint this will just uh really tie the piece together bringing that atmosphere in so there you go oh so i let that dry and then now you have a final print uh, and that's how you uh, paint a print, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, my next video will be a bonus video. Uh, I'm going to show you what I do for my presentation, um, and that's kind of the extra steps. So maybe you want to sell your prints or give it away as a gift or something, or maybe put in a gallery show. Um, so how do you take this and make it presentable? Uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the steps I do um, with that. Uh, that's totally optional. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, the printmaking series and um, how to paint prints.